and former assistant U.S. attorney Andy McCarthy, a Fox News contributor. Andy, always good to see you. Happy New Year to you. Haven't seen you since uh, Happy New we Year, are in Martha. 2024, so good, good to have you with us. Um, what do you make of this? Thank we you. talked to Alina Haba, one of uh, President Trump's attorneys yesterday. She said it was imminent, and indeed it happened right after our program. They are appealing to the Supreme Court. What does the court do now? Well, I think they have to take the case, Martha, and I say that understanding that they are very reluctant to wade into the politics of the 2024 election. But you will truly have chaos and, and maybe two layers of chaos if this case isn't grappled with soon by the one court that can sort of put an end to all the questions. And when I say two layers, what I mean is there's, there's litigation that's pending now that mainly goes to whether former President Trump can be on the ballot in connection with the primaries. They're holding their powder dry for a second round, if this is still a pending issue, that even if he can get on the ballot for the primaries, there'll be a slew of lawsuits about whether he can be on the ballot for the November election. So if you have that, I think currently there's about 33 states where there's some degree of litigation on this issue already. Uh, multiply that by two if it really is going to be two layers. And then you have 50 states making ad hoc rules about what procedures uh, have to be applied before someone can be, you know, be found uh, guilty or, or this disqualification can attach to them under uh, the 14th Amendment. You're going to have true chaos in the run up to the election. So what do you think the court does under the Chief Justice Roberts? I know Jonathan Turley wrote a piece the other day where he said Roberts would probably want to see the court act in a unanimous way on this. Do you think that's likely? And uh, do you think that they do make a, a decision that will be blanket across the country, that this, is, this doesn't fly and this is done? Well, I'd like to see a, a unanimous decision, too. I'd probably be surprised by one, but I can see a path to the court uh, maybe deciding this in a way that picks up at least one or two of the three progressive judges and has like a, a, an overwhelming majority. And that is what I think, Martha, that they don't want to get into is the nitty gritty of was there an insurrection? Did Trump incite an insurrection? Did he engage in an insurrection for purposes of the 14th Amendment? And I think the way that you get around that is simply to say that there's law for the proposition that this provision of the 14th Amendment is not, as they say, self-executing, which means like a number of other things under the 14th Amendment. In Section 5, Congress is given authority to enact legislation to enforce the provisions of the 14th Amendment. To the extent Congress has done anything that remains on the books, it enacted a statute, a criminal statute, that makes it a crime to engage in insurrection. No one has been prosecuted under that, not just Trump. None of the 1,200 people who've been indicted in connection with the Capitol riot. Yeah, so I think what point. the court can say is there has to be a procedure where a court gets involved and a person accused of this gets due process. To my mind, it should be, if you're going to accuse someone of insurrection, it should be a high level of due process, like guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, where you have all the protections of a criminal trial. But I think I could easily see the court doing that, and then they don't have to rule on the merits of whether right. there was insurrection and all that stuff. Indeed. I hear you. Um, Andy, we'll see what happens. Thank you very much, Andy McCarthy. Thanks, Martha. Joining us today. Was hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.